This is a Philodendron Gloriosum, which is finally growing. For a long time, it didn't grow or it would like push out a new leaf and then kill off the oldest leaf, but it has three leaves with another on the way. Anyway, it actually has a little scraggler tomato plant that just kind of popped up out of nowhere and I'm just gonna leave it be. Let's see what happens with this. Maybe I'll move it into its own pot actually. Right now, it's been really fun for me and I love how tomato plants smell. Any of you that have grown a tomato before know the smell and I love it. Let me know, let me know if you love that smell. The new leaf did come in with a little bit of yellow. This one is the newest leaf. I, I think the light might've been a little bit too close to it. I'm hoping the next one will be a little better acclimated. Anyway, it is a pretty beautiful leaf. And look, another on the way. I figured I'd give it some water since I'm right here thinking about it. There is liquid dirt mixed into this. Since we're right here, I'm gonna, I, I didn't show you guys, but this plant, my galaxy variegated money tree, it's kind of reverting. I don't really care, I still love it. This leaf right here, this kind of fresh looking one, actually broke off. I accidentally dropped the plant and it broke off and I ended up putting a Band-Aid around it. I think since it was such like a new leaf and it was still forming, it actually reconnected. I'm sure there's a, a term for it. It actually ended up working and the plant is reattached, the leaf is reattached and it's actually starting to put out a new leaf. It was a success. It was just like a tiny little Band-Aid. I just decided to try it because like, why not? And it ended up working. So if you have a plant that that happens to, you could always try and stick a Band-Aid on it and see if it'll reconnect. I do think the Band-Aid thing is something that will only work if the piece is just like freshly broken off. Like it fell off and then I decided to stick the Band-Aid on so the edges were still wet. Like they hadn't dried out at all. They hadn't calloused over at all. So I think that's why it worked. Something to try. Success. <laughs> and look at how cute these little curled leaf edges are on this money plant. So cute. I love them. This leaf is only alive because of a mere band-aid and a hope and a dream. <laughs> and the cute new leaf. While we're here, I actually, this is like so random, but up here you can see there's like a whole bunch of books on my dresser. Those used to be in the front room. The boys started getting into them, so they had to be moved into here. They're just blocking my view of my plants. It's something that's really stressing me out, even though it's like such a small thing, but I decided, I think I'm going to put the books down here. When Axel was alive, this is something that would not have worked out because we would put them in our room while we went anywhere. If he got anxiety, he would chew up books or just, I don't know why, anything like paper really he would go for. Totally not trying to be a downer at all by talking about Axel and like this might be kind of messed up but I'm just being straight up honest. Life feels so much easier. Like there's just one less being to worry about. I would give anything to have him back here. We just don't have to stress about a lot of things as much like putting our books where, where Axel could eat them. Okay, still cluttered and there's a lot of crap right here. Um, you know what, we're not gonna talk about that, but much better. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this Monstera subpinata, but for some reason, this thing is just trying to run all over the place, but I really want it to grow upward. So I've just been using little pieces of scotch tape to try and hold it down. This is the last leaf it put out before it started to do this thing. So I don't know. If you have any idea of why, please share. I wonder if the light is maybe a little bit too bright. One of my favorite things about keeping plants is the fact that you can tell when it's going to be spring. It is turning into spring. I mean, logically, we all know that the days are getting longer, but my plants have been just busting out new growth. My Monstera Albo finally put out a new leaf here. That's telling me with all of my plants, my Gloriosum, the tomato plant, the Schefflera, with all of my plants putting out these new leaves, like it is becoming spring and it just, it gives me so much hope. I hate the winter. I hate the winter, but these babies, 
they keep me going. One of the best new leaves, I think, is this one. My Anthurium crystallinum. This thing, you guys, I've talked about this plant a lot, but it has, it was struggling for a long time. Like the leaves were all coming out like this with like weird little spots. This one even came out with like not even a leaf. It was just like a stem. It finally put out its first healthy looking leaf since I got this dang thing. We've struggled for a long time. Oh, it has a little weird thing right there. Not that weird though. I think it's okay. It's going to be so big and I'm excited. Here's that, yeah, that's my favorite leaf that has been grown because me and this plant, we've been trying to get along for so long, but it just hasn't worked until now. I've been trying to get away with hardly ever watering this thing because it is getting such low light, but as you can see, it is needing a bit more water, so I need to not hold off as long. Hopefully that'll <laughs> give it a little kick to do a little better. Let's pull some of these off, actually. Something I have really been working on this year is just doing things right now as I notice the problem. It's been working really well. I'm just handling issues as they come because before I would just put small things, such small things that would really be so easy in the moment, off and off and off. And it just led to bigger, harder to solve problems down the road or it all compacted together and ended up to be something very much overwhelming, almost debilitating it felt like. A perfect example of this is actually while I was filming this video, going back and forth, trying to get my stuff ready to fold this laundry. There was a pretzel on the floor that Kai threw down and I didn't notice. I walked by once, saw it, and I was like, oh, I'll grab that in a minute when my hands aren't full or when I'm not in the middle of something, but I forgot about it. And then as I came in here to fold the laundry, I walked past it not once, but twice had forgotten about this pretzel, stepped on it, and now instead of it being one easy to pick up pretzel off the floor, it's a million little pieces scattered around my entire living room and kitchen. So just the perfect example of how like the small things sometimes got too big for me because I didn't handle it right then when I noticed the problem. Just something I've really been working on this year. And I am getting better, but clearly, like with the pretzel, I am, I still have a ways to go. <laughs> forget to mention this in my videos. If you are looking to support my channel, the three best ways you can do that are to thumbs up or thumbs down this video to let me know if this is a kind of video you like to watch. You can also watch my videos all the way through and maybe click on to a couple other videos if you have the time or you want to let your phone run. Leaving comments is great also. And the last thing there's actually four is to share my videos with like your other plant loving friends or people you think will connect with this content. This is super helpful for my channel, which is also super helpful to me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go do more plant stuff. So this corner in Rye's room has just felt so empty and like it needed a plant. I thought this Monstera would be perfect because A, I'll be able to keep better tabs on it. Where it was behind my couch, I was having a hard time noticing when it needed water. These roots are absolutely wild. So I think that this will help me keep better tabs since it's like right here where I'm constantly changing Rye's diapers. I'll be able to notice a lot more quickly. Oh, I need to wash off the leaves. We're not gonna do that today. These roots are gnarly. Yeah, buddy, they look really good. It has definitely been running out of water very quickly and I have not been noticing. Okay, we're now in my bathroom, that's why it's echoey. But I just wanted to go around and show you some updates on things. So first, I wanted to tell y'all I'm obsessed. <laughs> I mean, I've been obsessed with this for kind of a while. Lately, the last week or so, I've gotten really serious into it and I've been making a lot more planters. 
um, a lot better planters also, but this is one of the first planters I ever made and I absolutely love it. It has this Sansevieria of some sort in here, just a little teeny plant. It's even more fun to put plants in them and see them grow. This one actually doesn't even have a drainage hole. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but this Sansevieria, again, no idea of the ID, is doing really well in here, so cute. Oh, this one, with again, another Sansevieria. I think I need a water, or maybe this one's a Haworthia. I made this a long time ago. And yeah, they're not perfect, but I really love them. I used like some chain to make texture down here. So a couple of days ago, I picked up my polymer clay for the first time in probably a year or so, since, definitely since where I was born at least. And I decided to make some new planters. So I started out by making this one, which is a little bit of a bigger size, but like it's still small. So I made this one and then I've loved this planter a lot. So I decided to make a replica of it. Pretty good, I actually think it's better than the original one and this one actually has drainage where this one doesn't. And then I was like, I need to get a little more creative with this because those are cute, but they're just kind of basic. So then I made this one, but I love this like so much. Again, does have a drainage hole and my initials. And I really, really love this. That just was not enough for me. So I decided to venture on out there and I made this one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I like really love it. Okay, maybe it doesn't look as good on camera or maybe I'm just biased. How I have a thing for like mini planters, so this is perfect for me. And I absolutely love flowers. Back when I was a nail artist, flowers were like my thing. So I don't know, this is just, this has kind of been a really awesome creative release for me because I can feel proud of things I'm making, but not only things I'm making, but things I'm making and will actually use. On Monday, I will be posting a tutorial for these floral planters specifically, but if you wanna see a video with some of the more basic planters I've made, like I totally could do that too. These ones are literally so easy. But yeah, these are the ones that I'm like super, super in love with. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I individually cut and shaped each of these petals and centers of the flowers and then attached them all together. So it's been so fun. I hope you'll be excited to see a tutorial. Honestly, it's so easy, like so easy, just a little bit tedious. So I do think it's something that anybody can do so long as you have some patience to do it. <laughs> really, really excited for that. So stay tuned. Oh, did I? <sighs> I don't think I ever showed you guys this, this plant update. I should right now. It's an important one. This is a Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor and it's gotten really big. When I got this plant, it only had a few leaves. Some of the older immature leaves have died off, but it is getting the more mature three lobes now. This is the newest one. Oh, it's so pretty. I do wish there was a little bit more pink on it. These leaves came in with really awesome pink, but the last few have just been, this one has a little bit of pink, but this one has absolutely none. So I am a little bit worried about it, but overall, even like, even if it loses the pink, I do still love the pattern, the design of the variegation on the just white and green leaves. I just felt compelled to give you a little update on this one because it is quickly becoming one of my favorite plants. Really, really enjoy this plant and I enjoy the plant plant turrets in and I'm excited for it to get like huge like my white butterfly syngonium in the bathroom well like a lot of my syngonium syngoniums are just so cool when they get wild they really fill in okay so Rai Rai is going to be joining us for this last update I really wanted to show you so recently my mom gave me some sort of begonia and I like cut it back and just kind of started fresh with it it looked a little odd exactly old leaf fell off New leaves, new leaves, they look really good. They're definitely acclimated to the new environment. I love how it's like a tree, like there's just these big clusters of leaves and then just a bunch of bare stem and then a cluster of leaves and more bare stem. I think it looks pretty cool, honestly. What do you think? Those are actually all of the updates, kind of, I don't know, plant-related things I was going to get done and also wanted to show you today. I hope you liked this video. Again, please thumbs up or thumbs down this video and comment to help us out over here. I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!